Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the first video for the new playlist on Teaching TV Production Online. I'm Dakota Hoyle, and before we get started, please blow up the like button on the video and make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel to get all the latest updates on everything new that we're posting. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about white balance. And without any further ado, I'll see you on the other side of the intro. So you're probably asking yourself, what is white balance? Well, white balance is the act of correcting your shot to compensate for the type of lighting you're shooting in. Now you're asking yourself, how can white, well, not be white? To answer that simply, white reflects all colors of the light spectrum. In the case of photography, what you see happening in your shot is that the whites start picking up the tinge of color from your lighting source. Now you're really scratching your head and asking yourself, wait, light sources can have certain colors in them? Well, of course they can. If you remember from science class, color is just a part of the electromagnetic spectrum and that each color is its own wavelength. But don't freak out too much because we have a way to make measuring your light source pretty accurate. To do this, we use a scale called the Kelvin Temperature Scale. The scale ranges from about 1000 Kelvin all the way up to 10,000. And on this scale, certain temperatures correlate to certain light sources. For example, your lower range, which is about 1000 to 2000 Kelvin, is your lights that are very rich with reds. Uh, for example, if you were shooting using a candle as a light source. As you move up to around 3000 Kelvin, you enter the incandescent light source, which are lights typically found in your home. 4200 Kelvin or so is your white fluorescent lights found mostly in commercial buildings and classrooms. 52 to 6500 is your direct sunlight at noon on a clear sky day. And this light range is supposed to be the most accurate in terms of whites being white. Going higher, you start to enter the blue tinge with shooting your scene under cloud cover. And finally, at around 8,000 K, you enter complete shade. On your screen, for example, you can see a picture that has been corrected to different Kelvin temperatures. You can see the effect on each portion of the photo. What you need to know was that this image was taken at around 6,500 Kelvin. And from there, each portion was corrected. As you can see from adjusting to incandescent lights, your image will come out very blue. Now you're scratching your head and you're like, wait a second, Hoyle, I remember incandescent lights were around 3000 Kelvin in red. Why is the shot blue? Well, if you're balancing the image to make whites look white and get rid of that red hue tinge, your camera needs to add blue to your shot. But if you're adding blue to a shot that's already white balanced and being taken at 6500K, your image is going to turn out ridiculously blue. Now on the far side of this picture for shade, you can see that your shot is more of a reddish orange hue. The camera is doing this to compensate for the blue light, so it digitally adds in more red to what make your light to make your whites look white. So okay, you get how to measure light temperature using the Kelvin scale. But how do we make the camera correct the image digitally? Digital cameras, DSLRs for example, have a setting called white balance in them. In the white balance option, you can tell your camera which type of lighting you are shooting in. Depending on your camera style, your white balance options may look a little different. In the case of my Canon 90D for example, I have auto white balance, which is you allowing the camera to make its best guess on how the shot should be compensated. This is the easiest mode to shoot in, and it has the camera making the decisions for you. However, I honestly, I do not suggest you use this mode because I have found that the camera is very conservative on its adjustments, so most of the time your colors and your shots are going to come out extremely washed out. Other options in the menu could include, for example, settings for fluorescent lights, tungsten lights, daylight, and others. These options allow you to tell the camera what general type of lighting you're using, and it is more accurate than auto white balance. However, it's still not perfect, and it leaves us with our final option, which is manually adjusting the setting in your camera. 
Now I know and I get it. You're probably freaking out at this point, but I promise you manually adjusting the white balance isn't all that difficult. What I suggest doing is setting up your scene and lighting, and from there placing an object in your scene that you know for sure is white. There are equipment on out in the world, uh, you can buy it through Amazon, that helps you in this process of white balancing your camera. However, I'll be honest, I'm extremely cheap. 99% of the time, I'll place a clean piece of white printer paper in my scene and manually adjust out my camera using the Kelvin, uh, Kelvin scale till my white piece of paper looks white on my camera screen. And that's uh, been working for me so far. So now you have the basics of white balance. Now we're gonna drop into the artistic part of all this. Sometimes you don't want your whites looking white. For example, if you're taking a shot of a sunset, you want those warm red and orange colors in your photo. You don't want them to be washed out and looking like you're taking a photo at noonday. So what you would wanna do is set your white balance to 6,500K and let those warm colors shine through and really warm up your image. Now, for example, maybe you're filming a scene in which your main character is going through the pain and sadness of losing a loved one, and you want your audience to feel this emotion. Most humans, for example, associate emotions to certain colors. In this scene, I would suggest adjusting your white balance to pull in as much blue as possible into the shot. Even better, darken it up, turn down your lights, and really make the audience feel that your character is just being swallowed up in the darkness and dreariness of losing a loved one. Finally, say you're shooting a commercial for a backpack company and your client wants your final scene of the uh, commercial to be of your actor walking from the camera with their the backpack over their shoulder. The caveat to this is that they want the scene to be shot th during sunset for those warm colors. Your issue, it's noon on your last day and your plane leaves in a few hours. You can actually trick the camera. You adjust your white balance and make your shot look really, really warm by adding all those rich warm colors into your shot using the white balance. And your actor goes from walking the sidewalk at noon, 6,500 Kelvin, to it looks like they're walking the sidewalk at sunset. And it's an easy trick to pull off and you don't have to wait. So that's the basics of white balance. And this should be enough to get you going. I do want to mention though that as you create your own content, so this is the basics of white balance. And it should be enough to get you going on your own journey. I do want to mention though that as you create your own content, you will come up with your own creative style of filming. And honestly, that's perfectly fine. You are the filmmaker. It's your decision on how you want to set the scene and adjust your balance. Just know that everyone has their opinion on how a scene should look, and that's fine also. But it's just that. It's their opinion. Get out, have fun, and film. That's the best way to learn is by actually doing and creating content. Before I go, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to According to Hoyle's channel to get the latest updates on any videos that we're releasing. Till next time, have fun filming.